Welcome back, everyone. I was introduced to a a genetic AI hacker. I think I'm saying that right. But in any case, a company reached out to me. I looked into it a little bit more, and it just started getting me thinking. Like, I believe we're at the beginning of a lot of crisis in regarding cybersecurity.、Uh, one particular group would be. The pen testers.、Uh, what was once a very specific skills and a mindset, bunch of frameworks that you had to understand to become a great pen tester, has now became almost, if in my opinion, equivalent to developers, programmers,、um, people utilizing AI to write codes when they have no experience whatsoever. I'm starting to see that with pen testing hackers. So I'm going to share with you a quick introduction video that I was exposed to、uh, because they reached out to me. I'm not, I'm not saying anything negative. I'm just saying times are shifting. So I just want to share this with you guys, and this is what it is.、Um, it's called Penligent, Penligent dot AI. All right, this is the website.、Uh, And I'll just run this really briefly. Welcome to Penligent, the world's first agentic AI hacker, a fully intelligent AI platform built exclusively for cybersecurity. Just describe your target in natural language. Penligent takes care of the rest. It automatically analyzes, selects the right tools, and executes tests in one click. So, as a pen tester, once before. I mean, yeah, you would do, do your reconnaissance, you would run your nmap scans, you would identify the assets or targets that are online in within your range.、Uh, but that's all being performed by a few clicks now, which is like, wow, you know. So let's keep on going a little bit more. No command line needed. Results are instantly processed by our agent, which evaluates findings and plans the next move. Index all your tools. See every step of the reasoning process clearly. When a potential risk appears, Penligent verifies and prioritizes it automatically.、Eat、so traditionally, when you do find findings, when you come across、uh, some vulnerabilities or CVEs that are known sitting on assets, you actually had to go out of the software that you're using and then do more research on it,、uh, start searching and trying to find. More relevant information regarding those vulnerabilities, but it seems that this is actually pulling all that in for you. So it's more of like a one-stop shop almost. Now I haven't used it myself, so I'm just only assuming that this is what it's doing based on the fact that this intro video is showing us. Each confirmed vulnerability is added to your risk list, along with actionable remediation advice. Generate and customize professional reports in one click. Collaborate seamlessly with your team and edit findings in real time. Penligent transforms penetration testing into a guided, automated experience. Fast, intelligent, transparent, with clear visibility into every decision. Move beyond manual workflows. Let Penligent handle tedious configuration and setup for you. Discover, validate, and remediate risks with unprecedented speed and precision. Penligent brings clarity, control, and confidence to cybersecurity operations. From analysis to reporting, everything is just one click away. With Penligent, you'll see not only what's vulnerable, but why and how to fix it. Whether you're an individual, a small team, or a large organization, Penligent scales with you. You always know what's happening. What's next, and where to focus? Security testing without the guesswork. Security you can trust. Start your cybersecurity journey today with Penligent, where your words become protection. That's it for today. Like, comment. So I do have a few mixed things in here. It seems like it's it's more of a vulnerability scanner than a, a true pen testing agent or application. Uh, it, but I, I'm I'm kind of seeing that it could work both ways, and then also, if you were to ask me, like, are these going to replace humans? Right? It's 
I wouldn't say it will, uh, maybe some, but not all, because obviously you need someone to still navigate all this, right? It basically becomes another console, right? Another platform, another console. It may go mainstream, it may not, right? There's plenty of console style software, uh, EDRs, firewalls, um, a whole slew of them. And you could go on, the list is like endless, right? But now, you know, even for vulnerability scanning, whether you're using uh, Nexpos or using, um, uh, was it, uh, it's slipping my mind right now. But anyway, uh, there's, there's tons of other vulnerability scanners out there, uh, tons of sims out there. Is this going to correlate and feed logs into your sim uh, to identify vulnerabilities and, and threat actors? Possibly. It didn't never got into those type of details. But, you know, identifying an asset and, and scanning against it and finding vulnerabilities sounds more like a vulnerability scanner. Um, tenable. Oh, that, that was the name I was looking for. Tenable. Uh, Nexpos. And I, I'm sure there's a few other. Um, that that's probably crossing my mind right now. But it, it's such a weird place to be right now with AI. Uh, it's so easily to spin out AI applications, AI agents, without having or needing the experience level of a developer or programmer because you're, you're just prompting away and asking basically another machine to generate the back end for you. And what I'm seeing with all this is that, in my opinion, you will need someone to manage all this. How many individuals? I do not know. But I can possibly confidently say if a 50% reduction in force, workforce, is because the tools are more efficient now and, and can scale, meaning, and I'll put this into a really fine perspective is that let's imagine an organization that has 10,000 assets, okay? 10,000 physical assets with IP addresses that people actually use and it has operating system. And traditionally, you probably would have hired a team of uh, maybe like three to four SOC analysts. If you're rotating 24 hours, you probably have more. But let's just say it's four people and they would have to do their, uh, maybe they'll do more roles than just SOC. They'll do a little bit of red teaming, they'll do a little bit of blue teaming, you know, just to keep the day going and, and you know, just being more efficient, right? So those four individuals uh, traditionally, again, would be a lot of what their skill can provide uh, as far as knowledge, their experience and, you know, what they know. But fast forward to today, where I don't consider it being really traditional anymore. We have a lot of more tools that at our disposal that is a lot more automated regarding the use of AI. And because of that, I think that re reduction of force, where I say is 50%, we can remove two of those individuals and still function the same way with two individuals utilizing AI tools or just tools in general that can accommodate 10,000 assets. You see what I'm saying? So that's my theory right now. So what does that mean? Uh, is there no jobs because of this being in place? No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying there's probably going to be fewer jobs because of tools like this. And uh, organization will obviously buy into it because, hey, I pay, let's just say hypothetically licensing each year, I pay 5,000 that's a hell of a lot cheaper than paying 100000 for an individual in that same position. But I would still need a $100,000 $100, person to manage all this. So I will hire that one person. Would he be or she be uh, more efficient in it? It really depends on what their skill level of navigating around and using this tool, this console, whatever it is. Um, that's my theory right now that, you know, the job market is still there but they need people to manage or understand the tools that are in place or at least adapt to these new tools. Um, that's where I see there's a lot of um, 
discrepancy between people not being hired. Uh, you know, they're coming out of school or they have X years of experience. They don't have the right experience for what's presented today. Um, this could be also a challenge where, and it's probably been mentioned with Amazon and all these other big companies laying off people. I have heard that people are being laid off because they haven't adapted. Even though they know AI, they don't know the new AI. That's crazy, right? There's, there's, there's an old AI and there's a new AI. Just want to put that out there for you guys to understand. And, you know, it, it's a conversation that we need to have more of because we're trying to stay relevant in this industry. And by staying relevant, we have to understand what's what we're surrounded by and what tools are out there. So thank you guys again for being here. And I'll see you guys again really soon. Take care.